And thank you for joining us as we continue our series, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Uh, Because the truth is, Mr. Rogers had it right over 50 years ago that we have a responsibility to treat people better, to treat people with respect and to love people, even if they don't believe what we believe. I'm gonna hear hard truth with you. You're supposed to treat your neighbor good even if they hang up a Kamala Harris poster and you're a Republican. I'm just sorry. And you have to treat your neighbor good even if they wear a mega hat and you're a Democrat, okay? I know, no one likes those, but it's true. You actually have to treat people the way treat people Jesus treated people. If you are a Christ follower, it doesn't matter what they believe. It doesn't matter even if they're nice to you. The point is we are called to love others and to treat them with respect in the way Jesus treated other people. And that's what we're talking about today is being a good neighbor, acting like Christ acted, especially in the political environment that we have here. Today, I want to start out by asking a question like this. Um, Have you ever met somebody, and the moment you meet them, you realize something's different, right? Whether it's their accent, how they talk, whether they say words like different, they use different words than we would use, or they dress differently. And one of the first things you think is this. you, You want to ask them, where are you from? Like, where are you from? Like, where are you from that you talk differently, that you think differently, and that you act differently? Because the truth of the matter is, where you are from influences how you think, how you talk, and how you act. Act. Other cultures, they might view family differently. They might view dating and marriage differently. Others, they might dress totally different. Some cultures, they show like almost no physical affection. Yeah, in other cultures, like in Italian cultures, my culture, when I grew up, this is true, I had to kiss all my, gra- my grandma and all my aunts on the lips, on the lips, people, coming and going from every event. That was just how it was. I had to do it. That's just how we did it. One of my best friends on the football team when I played football at UB, he was from Texas, the South. And it's different in the South. I don't know if you know this, but it might be the heat or something, but everyone moves a little slower, everyone's a little nicer. And even when they're mean, they're nice. Did you know that? They'll say something mean about someone and how do they end up? Bless their heart. Just bless their heart. It's like, oh, that's interesting. They're always nice, right? Uh, I remember when I was in college ministry and we travel around different college campuses. Uh, one of my favorite visits was going down to Long Island and one of my now dear friends has the thickest Long Island accent you have ever heard. Like he is the poster child. And so I visit him one time and he tells me, Jonathan, we got to go visit poor Jeff. And so I think, okay, we want to visit a homeless guy named poor Jeff. I'm not sure why um, we want to visit this poor Jeff, but maybe he gives him food. I'm like, yeah, whatever, let's go. So we're driving to see poor Jeff. And, and uh, every time I see a homeless person, I go, I wonder if that's poor Jeff. No, we drove by him. Finally, we get to our destination and he wasn't saying poor Jeff. He was saying port Jeff, like Port Jefferson Station. We wanted to go to this beautiful area, but his accent was so thick, I couldn't understand what he was trying to tell me, right? Where are you from influences how you think, how you talk, and how you act. My kids love this show, Bluey. In fact, frankly, I love it too. Uh, I love when we watch Bluey. And they are from Australia. They talk differently, right? Uh, Instead of saying mom, they say mum right? Instead of a package, it's a parcel. The bathroom is the dunny. Uh, When they go have a barbecue, they call it a barbie. They don't put gas in their car. They put petrol. And they don't go to the pharmacy. They go to the chemist. And my favorite, I don't know why I like this one so much. A water fountain is called a bubbler. I I don't know why. It just seems more appealing to me. I want to go get a drink out of the bubbler, you know? Where are you from influences how you think, how you talk, and how you act. And so my question for you today and the title of my message today is, where are you from? Where are you from? Because the truth is, if you are a Christian, if you're a Jesus follower, you ain't from around here. Philippians tells us in 3.20, it says, but we, that's all of us, if you claim to be a Christian, a Jesus follower, we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. We are citizens of heaven. That's where we're from. And let me remind you, where you're from influences how you think, how you talk, and how you act. And so we should think, talk, and act like citizens of heaven. 1 Peter 2.11 says it like this, Dear friends, I warn you, 
is temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Because this world is not our home, we have to be careful not to get sucked into all the customs and all the ways of this world. But there's a way to fight against them because they begin to wage war against your souls. I wanna look at those phrases. Temporary residence. The first phrase, temporary residence, it's this Greek word, it's on the screen, I've been practicing it. It says, it's how you say it like this, partipedemos, partipedemos, like that, right? And it means stranger. The next word, foreigners, you say it like this, part of you coast, part of you coast, and it means having a home near. Now, why did I share those two things? Because those two words, they share the same root, you could actually translate them like this, to live near, but not in. To be close, but not from. And to be in, but not of. Where are you from? You're a citizen of heaven. You're living near, but you're not in this world. You are close, but you're not from this world. You might be in the world, but you are not of this world. And what's so interesting about that phrase in Philippians, uh, where he talks about we're citizens of heaven in Philippians 3.20, he says this, but we are citizens of heaven. But we are citizens of heaven. He starts with the word, but it's a conjunction. Now, I don't know about you, but if Schoolhouse Rock has taught me anything, I know how a bill is passed into a law, and I know conjunction, junction, what's your function, putting words and phrases together. And so what do I know? I know that whatever Paul said before this but is connected to the citizens of heaven. And so what I want to do is start in verse 18 of Philippians 3, and I want to start there, and it reads like this. It says, For I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things, and they think only about this life here on earth. Next verse, verse 20. But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. Now, I just want to tell you something. Truthfully, sometimes when I'm reading my Bible, because every week I got to get up here and preach from the Bible, sometimes, many times when I'm reading the Bible, I'll read something and I read it and I filter it through a lens. I filter it through a way of thinking that is, how can I preach this verse? Or is this a good verse to preach? Should I use this story? And I kind of have this way of reading where I just, how can I preach it? But the truth of the matter is, I need the word of God to transform my life just as much, maybe more than other people. And I need the word of God in my life. And so if I were to read these verses, not from preaching, just letting it speak to me, there's a phrase in these verses that is very, very difficult for me to read probably because it's very convicting of how I live. And you can put the next slide up, it was in verse 19, I highlighted it, it says this. The phrase is, they only think about this life here on earth. That's kind of an intense phrase. People, from, they only think about this life here on earth. I find it so easy to only think about this life here on earth. Right? I mean, the truth is we all want to be comfortable. I want to provide for my family. I want to take care of my kids. I want to save for retirement. I want to have a nice home. I maybe want to remodel the kitchen. Maybe she'll work on my landscaping, right? We know we're citizens of heaven, but we still do live here on earth. I still have to be practical. I still want to be a good steward, but I can so easily get sucked into only thinking that this life here on earth is all that matters. Yet for many of us, there is something deep in our hearts that isn't satisfied, that isn't fulfilled. You might try to keep filling it with things of this world, but it's never satisfied. We think remodeling the house will make us happy or buying a nicer car. We think if we just make a little more money, then, you know, then I'll be happy. We say things like, man, if we could just go on a little bit of a nicer vacation, if I could just have a little bit bigger house, if we could just have a few more things, then I'll be satisfied, then I'll be comfortable. But that won't ever work. Why? Because you ain't from around here. This home, this world is not our home. We're not from this. We are citizens 
citizens of heaven. And there's a deeper longing in us to be satisfied and to have purpose and to have peace. Those things won't satisfy us. Why? Because we live near but not in. We are close but not from. We might be in, but we're not of this world. We are citizens of heaven. And what I want to do today is I want to share with you some reasons, some benefits of being a citizen of heaven. I'm going to share two with you this week, and we're going to continue this talk next week, and I'm going to share with you two more. So because you're a citizen of heaven, because you're a citizen of heaven, number one is this, you will think differently from this world. Because you are a citizen of heaven, you will think differently from this world. Where you are from influences how you think. And since we're citizens of heaven, we're going to think differently from this world. Romans 12, 2 says it like this. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul is telling us not to copy the behavior and customs of this world, but how? How can I do this? How do I spend all my life here and everything I see is this world? How do I not copy the behaviors of this world? Sometimes this world the world's behavior, I call it a sneakily, sneaky behavior. It's so close to what we're supposed to do, uh, but it's just a little different, and it just kind of creeps in on us, and we can kind of lose track of what's really important. For instance, I'll just use some examples just from my life. I'm not telling anybody else what to do. I'm not saying you're doing I'm telling my personal life I'm being vulnerable with you. Just from my life, sometimes these shows on Netflix and all these streaming services, they just have so much swearing, and so much nudity and so much immorality and just the way they treat people and the, their attitude is so rough and, and, and it's so difficult. But yet this world, what do they say? You got to watch a show. It's so good. That's what they're telling me. It's, Jonathan, you, have you seen it? It's so good. It's such a good show. And, and I'm not being mean. I'm just being honest. Christians, they preface it with, you just got to put up with a little swearing, but it's so good, it's worth it. Oh, it's so good. It's okay. It's a little bit of nudity. You know, just, okay. That, that's what people, all right. And so one time years ago, I was at my buddy's house. We were playing in a basketball tournament, and my buddies were there. One of their wives were there. You know, we're all hanging out. And they're like, Jonathan, do you watch his show, Game of Thrones? I'm like, no, I've never, I've never, I don't really know Game of Thrones. I don't know what it is. And I'm thinking, like, I love Star Wars, you know, Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, cool. Like, they're like, you gotta watch the first episode. And so we watched the first episode. And I'll just be really honest with you, I'm kind of embarrassed that I watched the whole episode. There's just so much nudity, it's insane. And so we watched this episode, and after we finished it, I'm just like shocked. Like, you guys like this stuff? you know and they're like well what did you think and I'm like uh uh well I don't I don't know it was I don't know and I'm like frozen you know and they couldn't understand why I wouldn't watch more they couldn't under I've never watched another episode of one of the best shows that it's so good you got to watch it in the world my friends can't understand why I don't like the show but here's why I didn't watch anymore here's why I don't like it because I'm not from around here I think a little bit differently than the rest of the people in this world. Paul said, let God transform you into a new person by the way you think. Shows and movies, they're fun. I love it. I got this sweet TV that has this awesome picture. It has cool sound. I love watching movies. But listen, they're not more important than where I'm from. They're not where I get my purpose and joy. They don't mean more than heavenly things. It's not where I get my strength. My satisfaction is in Jesus. I don't need that show. I think differently. I view nudity, I view foul language and immorality a little different than the rest of the world because I continue to allow God to change the way I think. Because I allow God to change the way I think, some of these things are more obvious and easier not to copy the behaviors of this world. Let me give you another example. A few years ago, my dad and I, we were in Cuba, and we went out to eat to a restaurant, and we thought, let's order fish, because, I mean, fresh fish caught off of the coast of Cuba that day, it's got to be amazing. 
And so we order this fish and they plop this fish down on the table and it's got the fins and the scales and the head and the eyes just staring at us. And I'm thinking to myself, what is going on? Did they forget to bring it to the restaurant? They just took it out of the water? Like how, what is happening here? And I just, oh, sometimes I'm so appreciative of my dad. He just blurts out, what? We can't eat this. That's what he says. We can't eat this. And the waiter's like, what? What's wrong? He's like, we can't eat this. Bring us something else. Anything but fish. You know, he wasn't yelling. It was anything. Why? We don't think like that. We're spoiled Americans. We can't, we don't want to know where our food comes from, right? It's got to look clean when we get it. So we have clean consciences, right? We don't think like that because where we're from influences how we think. And so when something is so different to us, it's starkingly different. Where you are from influences how you think. And if we're not supposed to copy this world's behaviors, we have to change the way we think. Colossians 3 says it like this. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits on the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven. Think about heavenly things, not the things of earth. Every day my eyes see earthly things. Every day I see really cool cars driving by. Every day on Zillow I see these amazing houses. Every day I see more and more stuff. This is why I have to be careful of all the screens I watch because all the screens are just showing me all the things of this world and all these things that distract me from heavenly things. And so what do we need to do? We need to be intentional about setting our thoughts on heavenly things, on things above. Instead of only filling your mind with things of this world, fill it with heavenly things. God's word, his Bible, worship, prayer, church, preaching, podcast. I mean, I, I gotta be honest. I, you know, I grew up in the 90s. There wasn't that much Christian stuff out there, but we should be thankful all the access of all the music and all the things we have access to as Christians. We have an abundance of things that we could fill our minds and hearts with throughout the day. We have to be intentional of changing the way we think And it starts with being intentional with what we're feeding our minds and our eyes with. Because you're a citizen of heaven, you will think differently. And number two, you will talk differently from this world. You will talk differently. Now, this is a good opportunity for me to pause for a moment and to address something that happened last week. Uh, In my sermon last week, if you weren't here, I told a story about someone who had gas in public who was wearing a Lovejoy shirt, and, uh, the, and I used the word fart. Now, I didn't know that fart was not a good word to use on stage, and so my attorney, uh, he actually, the church's attorney sent me an email, and he sent me an email with a list of euphemisms that I should have used, and so I just want to apologize that in the future, I will try to use phrases such as break wind, or cut the cheese, <laughs> air biscuit, baking brownies, booty belch, burp out the wrong end, the butt trumpet, a cheek squeak, that's a nice one, a gurgler, I don't know, a hiney hiccup, a toot your own horn, and my favorite, a thunder from down under. Okay, so in the future, (laughs) sorry, I just had a joke. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, come to church every week, okay? You know, I'm just, I am. I got like a full night's sleep last night, so I am wild this morning. Sorry, I just had to make a joke. The truth is, as citizens of heaven, we think differently and we talk differently. I remember when I was younger, I was living at home, uh, me and my dad would watch this show, Swamp People. I don't know if you've ever watched the show, Swamp People, but it's about these guys and they live in the deep, deep south, like deep Louisiana, okay? And they hunt for alligators. Now they speak English, supposedly, but you can't understand what they're saying. Their accents are so thick, the show has to have its own captions just to understand what they're saying, okay? You can't understand what they're saying because where they're from influences how they talk. It doesn't just influence how we think, it influences how we talk. And James says this, if you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself. 
in your religion is worthless. Now, James, he just comes out and says it. If you claim you're religious, if you claim you're a Jesus follower, if you go to work and you say, I'm a Christian, I went to church on Sunday, but you can't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself. All the words say, you're deceiving yourself. When I gave my life to Jesus, one of the first things I started to stop doing, I stopped swearing. I stopped swearing. But as I matured and as I grew in my faith, I actually realized I was telling a lot of dirty jokes. So I, I stopped sharing dirty jokes. I'd even be careful not to say crude things. In fact, just talking about gas earlier is about as crude as I get. Uh, I don't talk very crude. I try not to. Even to this day, God is still working in me the words I say. A real problem I have is I'm very sharp or sarcastic or I'm kind of harsh with people. And so I'm still working on being more gracious and using a softer tone when I talk to my wife and kids and other people. Why? Because as a citizen of heaven, I'm going to talk differently than the rest of this world. If people don't, my whole life, ever since I started serving Jesus, they would comment, why don't you say these words? Why do you talk like that? My whole life, I would talk differently because I ch God changed the way I talked. My words won't always be how bad or how negative or how horrible my day was. I can still use my tongue to thank God, to praise God, and to remind myself how blessed I am, even in a bad day. We all know that person at work. We all know that family member. Everything's a big deal. Everything is negative. Everything's the end of the world. We all have that friend who just can't keep their mouth shut and they just say it out loud what they're thinking and everybody's like, uh-oh, here we go. But as a citizen of heaven, you will talk differently from the rest of this world. You have the opportunity to be a good neighbor, to speak positive, life-giving words to people. Yeah. Ephesians 4.29 says it like this. Don't use foul or abusive language. Don't use it. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Right there it says it. Don't use foul or abusive language, period. Oh, and let everything you say be helpful. Let everything you say be good. Why? So it could be an encouragement to those who hear them. Is everything we're saying an encouragement? Probably not because we're imperfect people. But there needs to be a reminder of where I'm from. And where I'm from is heaven. And because I'm from heaven, I'm going to talk differently than the rest of the world. Matthew 15, 18 says it like this. Jesus said this. He said, but the words you speak come from the heart. The words you speak come from the heart. Now, the interesting thing about this word in the Greek, it doesn't just mean your feelings. It actually means your thoughts, what you're thinking. Other versions will say things like, but the words you speak come from the things you think, how you think, how you think, how your heart, that's where your words come from. So how do we change the way we talk? We change the way we talk by what we change, but what's in our hearts and what we put in our minds. We change what's in our hearts and we change what we think about and eventually it affects the words coming out of our mouths. Now I'm just saying me. I'm not trying to tell you what to change in your life, but I'm using me as an honest, vulnerable example that I want you to hear. When I got saved, one of the ways I was able to change the way I talk was I stopped listening to all that rap music, which I loved, that had tons of profanity. I mean, just explicit everywhere. I stopped listening to it. I wouldn't even listen to it if it was bleeped out because I knew what it was saying. I stopped listening to all that music that just had so many sexual innuendos and so profane. And I stopped listening to that music. And what did I start to do? I replaced it with worship music. 
I remember the first time I heard a Christian rapper and I was like, thank God, like I could listen to rap music again. But there was times I never did because I'm not from around here. And I needed to think differently. I, I needed to change what was in my heart. And so I just had a constant reading of God's word, a constant listening of worship music. My friends didn't understand it and that's okay because I'm not from around here. I'm from heaven. And what happened was it began to change what was in my heart and it began to change what I thought about. And one day it began to change how I talked. If we want to change the way we think and the way we talk, then we have to better reflect what's in our hearts. We have to start filling our minds and our hearts with heavenly things. Here's something to think about. Don't worry if you're different from the world. Worry if you're not. Don't worry if when you go to the office, everyone else is talking about a show you never even heard of. They're using some new slang word from the whoever rap artist came out with and you don't even know. Who cares? You're not from around here. Don't worry if you're different from this world. Worry if you're not. If you think and you talk like every other show on Netflix and streaming and you have no problem singing to these explicit songs on Apple Music, then it might be time to make some changes. Because if you take James's words serious, a lot of us might be in real trouble. If you claim to be religious, if you claim to be a Jesus follower, but you can't even control your tongue, then you're just deceiving yourself. You're just lying to yourself because your religion is worthless. Here's the thing. If this is you, it's okay. Because it was me, and let me tell you something, at times it still is me. It's okay. But you have an opportunity to grow today. We have an opportunity to mature. And here's the truth of the matter that I found in my life. We have an opportunity to allow God not just to change, but many times allow God to bring healing in our hearts so it could affect the words that we say with our mouths. There's a healing, there's hurt, there's baggage, there's shame that when we give it to God honestly and openly, God, this is how messed up I am. He can bring change and healing in your life. If you struggle in this area, I wanna share with you, I just, man, if you struggle in this area, please, I just wanna share with you these next two scripture verses. I, I want you to save these and just think about them. I'm telling you, these are, I just love them. I wanna share with you two scripture verses that are so simple and so beautiful that I think it's a great starting point of a prayer you could start to say. The first one is a Psalm 141.3. I usually use the New Living Translation. That thing in parentheses next to it is the translation. The ICB is the International Children's Bible. Let me just tell you something. It says it beautiful. I love it. It says this. Lord, help me control my tongue. Help me be careful about what I say. What a beautiful prayer. What a simple prayer. Lord, help me control my tongue. Help me be careful about what I say. The next one is this too. Here's another one. This is, I love this one. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, what's in my heart and what I think about, be pleasing to you, O Lord. Those are two great, great starting points for all of us as we enter this journey of thinking differently and talking differently. In fact, if you get the, our, our bullets and our outlines at the bottom, both those scriptures are on there on the YouVersion Bible app. Both those scriptures are on there. I wanna take a moment just to pray for you. First, I wanna pray with anybody who maybe you feel like me. It's a constant struggle to think differently and to talk differently from this world. You saw that phrase, man, don't worry if you're different from this world, worry if you're not. And some of you might be thinking, I don't, I'm, I'm not that different from this world. 
you, like me, we need healing in our hearts and we need help. We need change in the way we think and changing in our hearts to think and talk more like citizens of heaven. I want to take a minute to pray for you. If that's you, you can just bow your head. You can just close your eyes. Even if you're watching online, I just want to pray for you. Lord, I thank you for everybody here. And I thank you for their honesty. In fact, I just want to ask you a hard question. Nobody looking around, just be honest. If that's you, if this morning you're like, man, I need help in the way I think or the way I talk, just slip your hand up in the air right now. Come on, just wave it nice and high at me because I'm with you. My hand's in the air too. Come on, everybody, who's, who needs it? Put the, that's awesome. Wow, hands all over. You can put your hands out. Lord, I thank you right now for their honesty. And I thank you, God, that you don't shame people. This is not a shame on you. This is a shame off you right now. In fact, I just take shame and I command it to remove from your life right now the embarrassing things you've said in the past, the things maybe you said to your spouse or to your children or the things you're saying to yourself. I just remove shame right now. And Lord, I just ask that your hand would be upon us right now. Lord, help me control my tongue. Lord, help them be careful about what they say. May the words of their mouth and the meditation of their heart be pleased pleasing to you, O Lord. Lord, help us to be deliberate in what we fill our minds and our hearts with, to what we let our eyes see. I understand we're surrounded in this world. We need to be deliberate and, and, and meditate on things from heaven, from up above. So Lord, help each person here to be deliberate as they leave this place, to open your word, to listen to worship music. Some people, there's gonna be a drastic change in the music you listen to. Some people, even though sports radio is not bad, worship music is better. And some people, I just wanna encourage you, begin to change your morning commute, begin to change the last thing you watch at night, and God's gonna to begin to change your hearts and you're gonna be acting more like a citizen of heaven. There's one more thing I wanna do. You could open your eyes. There's one more thing. Maybe here watching, you're watching online, you're here right now. And you'd say, I, I, I'm not really a citizen of heaven. I, I don't, I, I haven't really accepted, I'm not really sure where I'm at, or maybe I was, but I don't act like it. And there needs to be a coming back to God. There needs to be a repentance. The Bible actually says that for it is with your heart that you are believed. It's in your heart, like the way you think, in your heart that you believe. And it's with your mouth, the word you speak, that you're, you're saved. You believe it in your heart and you confess it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. And for some people, I felt like as I was preparing this and we were talking about being citizens of heaven and the words we speak, I felt like for some people here, today is gonna to be the first time you confess it with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord. I just felt like God spoke to me. There's some people here, you might have even said it with your mouth before, but at the time you didn't believe it in your heart. And I believe there are some people here that when we get ready to pray for the first time in your life, you're actually gonna confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord, that you need forgiveness, and you're gonna believe it in your heart, and you're immediately gonna be forgiven, and you're gonna become a citizen of heaven. So I wanna take a moment to pray. And what I wanna do, because I just felt this very strongly as I prepared this message, that I want all of us to say this prayer together out loud. If you feel comfortable, I want you to say it out loud. And for those of you who are saying it for the first time, for those of you who are believing in your heart, saying, I'm imperfect, I make mistakes, and the only way of forgiveness, the only way to God is through the forgiveness of Jesus, and you wanna pray a prayer asking Jesus to forgive you, I want you to say the prayer with us, and immediately it says you're adopted into God's family, you become a citizen, of heaven. And so I want to take a moment before I close and we sing a song. Why don't we just close our eyes, bow our heads. And if that's you, I want you to join all of us. Our church family is going to do it together. We're going to say this prayer. You just repeat this simple prayer after me if you feel comfortable. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. I've tried to do good but I always end up doing bad. Please forgive me of the wrong I've done. I believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Thank you for dying on the cross and that you rose again from the grave. Thank you that I'm forgiven and I'm now a citizen of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Come on, let's give a round of applause for what God is doing. 
couple of things really quick and then I'm done. First of all, if you said that prayer and you meant it, after our service, there's gonna be people under this projector to my left, your right. There'd be a prayer team, people we trust who would love to pray with you, to pray for you, to talk with you. But they also have this book called You Said Yes. It's a beautiful, simple, I mean, three minutes a day, that's it. It's 21 day devotional, but you can read it as long or short as you want, of explaining what it means to accept Jesus and to say yes to Jesus. So I wanna encourage you after the service, immediately after the service, they'll be there. Also, one thing I forgot to say earlier is if you're new here and you're visiting us, I I want you to join us in the lounge after the service. It's through those main doors, immediately to your left. There'll be put some people from our church. There'll be coffee and donuts in there. For anyone new, if you want to stop by, say hi, ask questions about our church or anything like that, we'd love to know you're here to meet you, to say hi to you. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you. Why don't we just stand as we get ready to sing one more song, and next week we're to hear the rest of the benefits of being a citizen of heaven.